Welcome back. This is Vaughn Lydico. Thank you so much for checking out your next weekly lesson. This is one that's really near and dear to my heart, and it's all about posture. Now, this has been like a love-hate relationship with me since I started. I had the worst posture when I first began dancing. It was horrible, mainly because I had a lot of training in martial arts and I wasn't really grilled on posture in that. So I had a very rounded shoulder. I was always sort of hunched over a little bit and I found it so difficult to get posture right. I mean, I struggled for years. I went the complete opposite. I ended up hyperextending, going backwards. Ultimately, when I started uh, becoming a teacher and studying and, and looking at these things, I've discovered something called mechanics. Now, mechanics were a principle-driven system of how to improve your technique using the human body. That's a real fancy way of just explaining. It's how your body moves through the space. And if we look at any real sport that um, is, is full of elite performers and goes to that next level, what we find is that they're also analyzing what it takes to have good posture because Olympic sprinters, hurdlers, golf uh, pros, all of those sort of sports all know that with good posture, they will improve their performance by a few percent, maybe even more. And that makes all the difference. Now, if we think about it like this, posture for us as dancers is critical. And you might say, yeah, that's obvious, I know that, I've heard about it, but you may not have a system that you use to ensure that you create good posture every single time. And the reason I say that is because I've done a lot of research, I've done a lot of study, and systems aren't really taught in dancing. It's sort of like stand up or come on, you know you should have good posture, but you don't know how to create it. And this is the big missing gap. So I encourage you, explore these ideas, chat about them with your coach. I'm sure your coach or the classes you go to, they have their own way of doing things. So I'm just gonna share what really worked for me because there's many different ways to develop good posture. And I hope that these ideas really enlighten you. They give you a formula you can use every time and you get really excited because with the good posture you're about to create, you will notice a difference in everything you do. Now what we have to understand first of all is without good posture in place, all of your problems are gonna stem off that. Now that's a really big call because you could argue the point and say, well, my footwork's bad or my technique's bad or this or that. The point is you will not be able to dance your technique. You won't be able to dance your footwork effectively. You certainly won't be able to execute good choreography, basic choreography, high level choreography without excellent posture. It's a non-negotiable. It just cannot happen. It does not matter how much you work on those other factors. Without a good balance and posture, we're not going to work. Now, the reason for this is because we are always fighting gravity. Gravity is just simply trying to pull you to the center of the earth. And as dancers, our job is really to resist gravity. Our spine has to move through time and space whilst we dance our feet through the floor. So we actually have this opposing force always going on through the body. And because of this, we need to make sure that we have a system in place so our posture can remain aligned through all our movements. And this is for social dancers and also com competitors. This is not just for high grade dancing. This is just so you feel good. Now, most problems in dancing, like I said before, can be traced back to bad posture. Your balance, the control, your look, the feel, timing, technique, choreography, spins, all of this can come back to something to do with a postural problem. Now, that's not always the case. Uh, I will caution you, there's always other factors at play. Of course, we can't be too uh, single-minded. However, it's uh, a basic known fact amongst uh, you know, a lot of coaches is that you can look back to this as the simple thing. So I hope I've drilled that in enough to make you aware that posture is a non-negotiable. It's not something you're just gonna get. It's a constant work in process. It's something you have to be aware of every single minute of the day because it's not just when you're in the dance studio, it's the 18 or 20 or 22 hours outside of the dance studio that your posture is really taking place and it just shows up in the studio. Now what I'd like to cover here first is the six basic causes of what bad posture is. So these are ones you can maybe identify with. I mean, we all will be able to identify with at least one of these, but let's have a look at the first six basic bad postures. And please remember, there are definitely more than one way to create bad posture in your body, but we'll just talk about these. Now, if you wanna work through me here, you might wanna stand up or just sort of visualize this. But the first one is this where your body or your pelvis collapse sideways. Now, this can be common in men in ballroom dancing and Latin dancing when they're trying to settle a hip movement or they're trying to create their frame and that, or, or, or the ladies and they get very 
relaxed into the pelvis and you'll find that your body creates like a sideways curve. This is called collapsing on your side or side loading. Very common mistake because we don't often think of bad posture as going sideways. Now the second one is the pelvis is tilted behind or underneath. Okay, the third one is the pelvis is tilted forward. Now both of these can be caused by sitting at a desk job for too often. It's very common to have a very relaxed hip area because we don't think about it that much unless we're starting to dance. The fourth and fifth, we have the shoulders rounded backward and the shoulders pulled forward. Now this again, you can probably spot this if you go down to the local shops. You will see many people walking around with just well, it's bad posture, but you know, they've relaxed too much forward or back and they look slumped over. Uh, basically, like almost the life has been sucked right out of them. But we as dancers, we cannot afford to have this look. The sixth one is one you may not have thought about very much, but it is bad posture. And that's with the head slightly forward. So if your head is pitching forward or it's slightly back, you will notice straight away that your posture reacts to that. Because what we have to remember with the posture is we are talking about the spine. Now the spine itself is, is not fixed. The rest of our uh, bones in the body uh, are fixed, you know, so they're connected together by joints. So what we have to understand is that the vertebrae that make your spine are, are, are very impressive. I mean, it's an incredibly complex system, but they're basically an interwoven network of ligaments and muscles in the back. Now what's, what's happened over time is to create all these bad posture uh, within your body is that these muscles have been trained to pull your vertebrae in different directions. Now remember, I'm not a chiropractor. I, I haven't studied the back in in-depth and I think it's an incredibly uh, specific field. However, in dancing, I do know this, that you do train in good or bad posture. And if you think about those muscles pulling you in different directions, and over time, they get fixed in that position. So what you're gonna have to do is, it's gonna probably be a little bit painful at first, but you're gonna have to work through re-correcting the back. You may have to go outside and go to an expert to get your back aligned professionally, then work through it in the studio. Maybe even go to the gym to get specific exercises to build the back muscles into place. But the point is, is that the bad posture has become a habit for you if the, one of these six elements are in your dancing. And the first starting point is to identify which one of those is the posture you're creating. And then we've got to go about using uh, my formula. It's about seven steps long to implement starting the process of change and of course reinforcing it out there in the big bad wide world. As we've said, the spine is not fixed, it's made out of vertebrae. The bad posture is a habit or it's a fixed way of holding yourself up. And you must always practice posture outside of the studio. It's not good enough just doing it in the studio. So in work, at the office, in the home, in your car, when you're walking, when you're at the gym, you're always, always, always implementing this system I'm about to give you to create this new posture for yourself because it's gonna take time. But as I said, you're not gonna get it in one day and certainly you're gonna to have to keep implementing it for the rest of your life, especially as you are dancing more and more. So here's the seven steps that I'm gonna get you to go with. Now, I've attached a graph within this PDF to give you a bit of a visual clue as to what you should look at your body. I mentioned the, uh, a favorite friend of mine, Freddy the Skeleton. Well, you'll see here that the, uh, the body itself, and not to get too technical, but if you look at the side image, you'll notice that in the joints of the body, okay, specifically three areas we're gonna look in, there is a vertical line that we call a vertical axis that cuts your body directly in half. And the first starting point with me, with all my students, is I'm always going on about this vertical line. You know, how you can visualize this and pull your posture up through it. Because a lot of people talk about it, but what really clicked for me was when my coach said, Vaughn, your body, your joints, if they are aligned correctly and you can feel this within the body and you get the, the joints to sit on top of each other properly as you dance, you're always gonna have good posture and therefore your balance will be correct, you'll be able to lead better, everything will just fall better into place. And this is when the lights really turned on for me. So what I want you to do with that graph in front of you, and then of course, 
with your body, you're also going to feel where these points are. So you can start to play around with that as you practice this week. Uh, but what I want you to do is to look at this graph and step one is this. You've got to touch the top of your cheekbone near the ear. You'll notice that at the highest point of your cheekbone, in between uh, the cheekbone itself and the ear, there's going to be a small dot or you'll see the arrow there. Now that is the head weight. Now, as I mentioned before, sometimes your head weight is forward. Well, this is going to be how you're going to get your head to sit correctly on top of your body for your posture. Step two is I want you to touch your shoulder joint right in the middle. Step three is I want you to touch your hip joint in the middle. Step four is you are aware of these points and what you try to do is you try to line those directly on top of each other. And you'll probably feel an instantaneous shift in your spine and you'll probably feel a lot taller and straighter immediately once you get those three points lined up. So this isn't very complicated, but with those four steps, you can get them in one straight line. Step five, once you've lined those vertical uh, columns together, we are now gonna relax our shoulders and relax our shoulder blades. So we're not hunching, we're not stressing the body, we're not too tense, we're very relaxed. Because now step six is we're gonna pull up through this vertical axis and to what my coach always used to say, put your head, hook it to a butcher's hook in the ceiling. I didn't really get that concept because I used to put my head up as high as I could, but I'm, I used to lean back a lot. So my shoulders would go back and I'd end up pitching forward and I'd look a little restricted to so to speak. But this butcher's hook is now connected to that line that you see on the skeleton. You're hooking it up there. Most importantly is step seven, because you don't want to just pull your shoulders up. You don't, you're not trying to do that. You're actually trying to create this posture from a very low point in your body, believe it or not. You're trying to actually pull your posture up from underneath the back of your thighs. And this for me was like the lights turned on and went, Wow, I didn't know that because I'd forever tried to create posture by pulling my chest up or by pulling my shoulder blades down and poking my chest up or something really high. But when Anne told me that I needed to think of my muscles, specifically the back of the thighs and under the butt or the gluteus maximus, I used to have to think about pulling up from there, then engaging through the abs, not flexing the abs, just engaging through the center of my body and pulling up through those, the hip, the shoulder and the cheek. Now, as I lifted up through there and put my sort of quote unquote, my head on the butcher's hook, I immediately felt taller and everything felt in alignment. And what I did to drill this in is I just did, as I said in the previous lessons about basic work, I used to practice my posture in just basics, very little turning or spinning. I, lay, I, I saved that for a bit later and I would walk around all day standing like a dancer. And I think that's what you need to do too. You need to see yourself as a dancer, even if you're a social dancer, a medalist. You just do it for fun. I want you to be able to experience the best dancing you possibly can and it will absolutely be a result of good posture. So for you, your challenge is in the next seven days before our next lesson, what you're going to be doing is implementing this guide. Now if you have any questions or you don't quite understand my explanation, I would really like you to leave a comment or a question below um, and, and explore this. Take it to a friend and say, listen, I'm, I'm trying this new exercise. What do you think? And get corrected by your coach. You know, this, this information is out there and there are so many ways to think about posture. But one thing I know from studying ballet and other dance styles is that they are drilled on this from day one. In ballroom dancing, there can be a tendency to overlook posture and go towards technique about the feet and the steps very quickly um, and sort of just saying stand up. So what we want to do is be very specific. I hope this has made a lot of sense. Understand that there are six causes for bad posture. There is a seven step formula you can use to create good posture. And I look forward to hearing about your results. Hopefully you are noticing a difference in your dancing immediately because of this change. Thanks very much and I look forward to bringing you next week's lesson.